this is AndyTube. If you've watched very many videos on my channel, you may realize that I'm kind of obsessive uh, about the needle bar on a sewing machine. That I like to be sure it's at the right height, and I like to have it squeaky clean. And uh, I think come of, some of that comes from experience of maintaining my Weiss machines over the years, but also, uh, you know, I get a number of emails and comments every month, uh, you know, like three to four hundred of them, and uh, they, they uh, quite a few of them are about needle bar and needle bar problems. And uh, in this video, uh, I'm going to show you uh, how to check and set the height of the needle bar and remove the needle bar and put it back in uh, on a and probably clean it on a Singer Model 353 Genie. This is my little uh, Genie that I'm doing the series on, and his name is Benny. And uh, let's get started here to check the height of a needle bar. And this is a very common needle bar system on um, on a lot of Singers. You want the needle bar to be set at its lowest height. And you can do that by watching the, the, the needle clamp or the bar get to its lowest point before it starts going up. Or you can watch the, the needle bar uh, clamp area like that. Um, a lot of times that's what I do because it's easier for me to see. But also on a lot of these machines, uh, there's this needle bar connecting link down in here that's coming from the take up lever system. And uh, I've found that when the, the clamp or the needle bar is at the lowest position, this um, needle bar connecting link will be straight up and down also. And since it kind of rotates it would make sense that at the lowest point it's going to be straight down. So sometimes I use that looking behind the needle bar at that to be sure also that I have it at the lowest point. And um, get it there. What, what's critical about that is that there's uh, these timing marks on the needle. And there's two of them. These are little uh, grooves cut right into the needle bar. And they often look black because of uh, dried oil and dirt and stuff in there. But with the needle bar at the lowest point, the top um, timing mark should be parallel with the bottom of the needle bar bushing or bearing right up here at the bottom. I, let me see if I can get a little closer and stay in focus here. Um, in the casting of the machine there's a hole right here for the needle bar to go through and, and set inside that hole and held in place by this uh, set screw is the bushing or bearing that the needle bar glides through and it's a perfect fit with the diameter of the needle bar and that's what they're looking at when when they say when the needle bar is at the lowest position that top timing mark is parallel with that not with the casting or not with some plastic cover but with the actual bearing or bushing down here and uh, I don't I don't know if See if I can get maybe a little more light. It's kind of difficult to see, and I haven't cleaned this machine, so it's a little dirty. But right here is my metal I'm talking about, and the top timing mark, you, you can see the lower mark, and that's for timing the hook. But the top timing mark is for needle height, and it's very right up close to that bushing. Now, I can see a little slice or sliver of the silver 
needle bar up above the black mark and, and that's fine because if you don't see that you don't know how far the black mark is up inside so uh, it looks good to me that, that the height is right it's just right up against the bottom of that but I can still see the black mark okay so I would say for me that this needle bar is at the right height and uh, that has to be set before you can set the timing because uh, now I'm not going to do timing in this video but when when you want to check or set the timing you first have to have your needle bar at the correct height because as you keep rotating the hand wheel towards the front of the machine that second timing mark is going to come up to where the top timing mark was right up at the base of that bushing and now when you have the timing mark there you would have a needle in the clamp and the needle should be right dead behind the hook point of the sewing hook so needle you know the needle bar position is very important cleanliness just lets it work properly uh, without putting a strain on the mechanics or the machine and uh, some people might be surprised how a dirty needle clamp uh, affects sewing where it, it can have old dried up oil in there because you know people oil their needle bars it comes down seeps through the clamp and gets in here on the jib and so forth and prevents the needle from going all the way up or puts a little slight twist on the needle and effects so it's always good to, to have these parts clean now since this uh, the, the the height of the needle bar looks good I'm going to show you how to take out the needle bar and clean it put it back in and then when we put it back in we'll definitely have to reset the height because we've we've you know moved everything we've taken everything out so anytime you're going to work on the needle of course you want uh, the needle bar you want to take the needle out <laughs> and then uh, in this case we have a common type of a um, needle clamp that has a screw that's screwed right into the lower end of the needle bar and that's what's holding the clamp on there and that usually you can just uh, loosen one screw there and uh, or remove it usually I guess you have to remove it and when you take that out you can pull the the needle clamp off the bottom of the needle matter of fact let me move this needle bar up a little bit so we can see it here and work on it now sometimes the the needle clamp doesn't want to you know doesn't want to come off it's got this old dried up oil and the old oil gets what I call varnished and gets dry and dark and it's it's like glue um, and it has glued this needle clamp onto the end of the needle bar and if you live in a humid uh, or salt near salt water uh, climate you can actually get a little bit of rust in there and the rust will make it stick to the uh, needle bar so don't be surprised uh, if you if this doesn't just slip right off right <laughs> Um, on my wife's machines, I usually take the needle bar out once a year and clean it and clean the needle clamp and everything and put it back in, set the height. At the very least, I, I put a cup of cleaning fluid and lower the needle clamp into it and let it sit overnight. And then rinse it off with alcohol and blow dry it and just to be sure it's clean. But here's the little screw that, that holds that. Uh, needle clamp on there so we always want to put our uh, pieces in a safe place now let's see if I okay look here this one looks good 
Sometimes you can twist it back and forth if it seems frozen. You can put fresh oil on there and let it soak. You can put a penetrating oil. Uh, I don't know. Um, people talk about PB Blaster. I just use a little WD-40 because I usually have some of that around. You can put alcohol on it to soften it. You can heat it up with a hair dryer. You know, and and soften it. This one is pretty good here. You see, see it's uh, turning. It wants to come off. So you got to be careful because some needle bars have this little tiny piece in there at the bottom. And the parts list for this genie says it has that piece, and it's called a jib, a G-I-B. And they come in different shapes and sizes, but the idea is that uh, when you put the needle up in there and you turn the thumb screw, it pushes a jib onto the needle to clamp it. Or the thumb screw pushes the needle into a jib to clamp it. This is kind of mucky looking, and you can see all this darkened stuff around here. So I, I'm, I think it's a re really great idea to take it off and clean it. But what about this uh, jib? Let's see if I can find it in here. Oh, there. Oh, I almost dropped it. Okay, I've seen ones like this. It's like, it's kind of like a little half of a hockey puck. And you can see the, you can see the groove in there for the needle to go up in. See how tiny that is? Man, so that is real easy to lose. There's a couple places that sell certain jibs like this if you happen to lose it. But uh, some machines you can't find the replacement for. And I've actually uh, bought, you know, used machines where this was missing. And I actually had to buy a used needle bar <laughs> to just to get this part. So needle bar jib or needle clamp jib. And, and it's metal. So a little magnetic dish or bowl is a great place to put it so hang on that's where I'm putting mine okay so let me, let me back out here you may you may notice I have the machine sitting up on the hand wheel end so that I could try and give you a good view of all this um, see look how this is nice and dirty, but now you have to do this because the needle bars pull out up when you go to remove them. So you, you can't pull them out with the, with the needle clamp and stuff on there. So that's the first step. And like many Singer machines, the second step is to loosen this set screw or clamping screw on the... Uh, well, this is called like the uh, connecting link to the take-up system or the clamping link. It's got different names. Many screws are right in the front. And it's just a little square with a set screw. This one, uh, it's from the side. And uh, fortunately, it's very easy to get your screwdriver right in there on the side and loosen that. Um, screw. Sometimes it's a really tight fit to get past the frame. But in this case it's right there. So let me get a screwdriver in there. And uh, now this this doesn't screw into the needle bar usually. It just uh, squeezes a clamp around the needle bar to hold it. Uh, some push a needle bar and pinch it. Um, so usually, I guess what I'm getting at is, uh, you know, a, a couple of good turns will loosen it enough to remove it without taking this out. And let's see if that did. 
once I think I've got it loose enough I'm going to try pushing up there it goes it's kind of sticky it doesn't want to come out of that clamp usually because there's all dried oil above and below it and don't don't force it and don't bang on it with anything because you'd be surprised how easy you could bend one of these needle bars so I'm just kind of twisting and pulling and then I've got it out of the clamp hmm look at that nice and nice and yucky there huh <laughs> see how that end looks mm-hmm and there's where the jib sits down in this little cutout at the bottom and I'll be showing you how to put it back in there's a way to put it in and you can kinda get it in there wrong but then you really can't get the clamp on properly there's the two timing marks I mentioned you see how dark they are from the old oil and then here's here is uh, where it was uh, clamped before I think I can see where the screw was pinching it and up at the top and this one is sealed at the top some are open this has uh, looks like a solid bar some are open about halfway and then they then they're solid the rest of the way All right okay so let me move the machine back out of the way and get this work area open and I'll, I'll show you um, how I clean this and I'll just do it here on the workbench instead of the sink okay a lot of times I, I clean this at the sink when I'm cleaning all the other parts I've removed and occasionally if I have enough uh, parts and I want to set it up I'll put it in an ultrasonic cleaner which uh, can get get it very clean too but let's just uh, I'll show you the idea and you can do it how you want some people can just use a uh, you know alcohol and so forth I use a product called crud cutter um, you can buy it in smaller containers than this I buy this I think at the Home Depot um, I'm sure it's sold in many other places I like it because it's a concentrated uh, degreaser and stain remover okay and uh, for cleaning a part like this I, I have used it up to full strength um, you know or 50 percent we're like spraying the whole machine whole machine down 15 to 20 percent is usually good when I do that in the shower but um, I've got the uh, the needle clamp and the thumb screw and the little mounting screw uh, what I don't put in here is the jib because I, I just have lost a couple over the years so uh, if it needs cleaning, I take it out of the magnetic dish and clean it and then put it right in the magnetic dish. <laughs> like it never gets out of my hands. So here's my mixture. I'm, I don't remember what's in here. This is probably about a 20 or 25 percent. So uh, I'll spray enough of that in here to soak it. And I'll just let it soak. And... And you, you know, you can use dish detergent or whatever you like to clean with. Um, on this, I'm going to, I'm just going to, oops, get this down. I'm just going to spray it down and try scrubbing it a little bit, not soaking it really. We'll see if we can uh, get it, get it, some of it off. You know, a lot of it. If you can see the water's turning dark already, you know it works pretty pretty quickly. Uh, let's see, I got a brush over here. Let me grab a little wire brush and uh, toothbrushes, wire brush. I know that this is the worst part of it, and getting in the little slot 
where the um, thumb screw and the screw and the jib go in there. So I thought I'd give that a little bit of a scrub down with this wire detail brush. And, uh, you know, a lot of people, like I said, just put this in a container and cover it with alcohol and let it sit overnight. And in the morning, you could probably just rinse it off. Same thing with this uh, crud cutter. And then a little squirt here. Then I'll take an old used kitchen sponge and get some of that cleaner on there. And scrub it up with that soft nylon side of it. And when I, um, you know, take several parts off of machines when I'm restoring them, sometimes over a hundred parts, and I'll use an ultrasonic cleaner or I'll just separate the parts into bags or cups and then take them in the kitchen and just clean all the parts at one setting. Um, Sometimes I don't like the way I'm getting them clean hand cleaned and I'll put them in the ultrasonic cleaner which is good for needle bars, presser bars, gears, um, parts like that. Get especially clean in the ultrasonic cleaner and I have a video about an ultrasonic cleaner on my website. But this is, this is looking pretty good. Mm -hmm. So let's uh, spray it down a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, it's looking more. It's looking nice and silver inside here now, <laughs> instead of all black and brown. These. Um, uh, timing marks are staying black so I don't know if I'm not getting them clean I know like when you pull one of these out of an ultrasonic cleaner the the timing marks are silver just like the rest of the bar mm -hmm. so it's actually looking pretty good isn't it comparative I can see where the where that the clamping screw pressed into it right there. Okay, let me just dry this a little, and then uh, let me get a polishing cloth. Oh, oh, oh! I have one here. Now, here's something else I will do on on these kind of uh, presser bars and needle bars, and I'll polish them with a metal polish. Uh, I polished them with my Dremel and a wire wheel before, um, but you know, using a metal polish only takes a minute or so. And I use uh, Brasso. I've been using this a long time. It cleans brass, copper, stainless steel, chrome, aluminum, bronze, pewter, like that. Uh, it's a little stinky than some of the others, but it costs about half or less than half of some of the others and I've tried about uh, at least a half dozen others and they're they, they're all competent but they don't do any better so when I can buy this for six or seven dollars I'm happy with it I'll take an old t-shirt here uh, material and I'll put some of the polish on there and then I'm going to start up here at this end up here and I'll spread that around and let the chemicals do go to work on it mm -hmm. now if I was doing a lot of parts uh, sure I would put latex or rubber gloves on for sure mm -hmm. Hang on to it and twist it up 
up, polish it up and down and twist it around. See if I can't get a nice good shine on here. It doesn't doesn't take that long. Mm -hmm. Of course now I'd like to rinse this. Some some people say they leave the residue on there because it helps prevent rust, but I'm not too sure about that. <laughs> I think most of them are water-based, so I usually will rinse this off with warm water and dry it. And since I don't have a sink here at my workbench, I'm going to just step into the washroom and w wash this, and then I'll be back. So here is the, my needle bar, all washed and dried now. And after cleaning it, degreasing, and polishing with a metal polish, I'm very happy with that. So next, let's take a look at the needle clamp and thumb screw and mounting screw because I've been, I've been. Uh, Soaking that while we were doing this other you can see the Debris coming off there. It's my little strainer here so mm -hmm. Ooh. What? That's one thing I really like about the old vintage uh, parts is that they do clean up, you know, they're all sturdy metal and they clean up so nice and if, if you, you want to polish the chrome or polish the steel you know they, they will polish up very nice they're usually high quality these uh, I will call bright bright metal uh, I don't know if this is really even chrome plated I guess it is when you get back to those like slant needle machines and stuff they were triple chromed and boy if you work with that chrome just a little bit they shine up but this is all uh, clean now well let me see let me uh... Let me get a little bit of that stuff on here let me just let me brush the threads on this a little bit make sure I got any grit out of those threads yay mm -hmm. okay then I have my little mounting screw cleaned up nice mm -hmm. Same kind of deal with this. The threads get gummy looking and stuff. So maybe I'll give them one more squirt and a little brushing. Mm -hmm. I have cleaned parts like this by soaking them in warm water and uh, Joy dish detergent. Uh, I'm sure there's other dish detergents that would work and just letting them soak and go do other things on the machine or other things in life and come back hours later or even the next morning and oh yeah I wonder how my parts are and they're all pretty and degreased okay so I've got that let's look at the clamp itself now Hmm. Now, if you remember, it was all stained and dried oil and muck on it everywhere, and it's looking a lot better now. Wonder if I could get my little. Where's my little brush? I don't know if I could get my little brush up through there. Just want to be sure that it's clean up in here. Ha! Ah, see that? <laughs> so, let me get some more of this cleaner. And this this cleaner, that was at about, uh, 
I'm guessing about a 25% crud cutter to 75% water. So if you used it half strength or full strength, you can imagine how it would cut through that grease and grime right away and quickly. Mm hmm. All right. Okay. Very nice. Okay. So, um, let me get the jib, and I'm going to try and show you up close um, how that goes in. Excuse me while I move this over. I'm going to show you, try and show you how this goes in on the tip of the needle bar. So when I'm doing it later in the video, you have a pretty good idea. Some of these are a perfect uh, like half circle. And this one looks like it is. Um, the two ends of the cut are flat. Sometimes one side of the hole is longer and at more of an angle than the other side. So so then you have to put it in a certain way and this looks pretty balanced and the hole is even. It doesn't taper on one end or anything. So when I put it in Remember this uh, slot cut out there? It's just going to go sit right in there like that. And if it's one that's uneven, it's a clue you put it in wrong if it won't sit flush. It has to sit flush all the way around or you won't be able to put the clamp over it. Right? So this one, because it's just like a half circle, it just popped right in. Some have been one side of, of the puck, so to speak, different, longer or at a different angle. Instead of like a 180 degree angle, you know, it's been at a 60 or something like that. So if you put it in wrong, it'll stick up or stick out and you can't get the needle clamp. But if you're unfamiliar with the machine, always look for a jib. When you pull off the, the clamp, always look in the clamp and look in the needle bar to see if there's a jib. Okay, so I'm going to uh, dump out my cleaning supplies here and get the machine back up. And, and I'll show you how to put that back in and set the height of the needle. Now, to put this back in, we're just going to slide it in the top bearing or bushing, whatever, and we're going to slide it into the uh, clamp. Now, if you've moved your uh, hand wheel, you, may, you might need to, you know, play around with that a little bit and it's squeaky clean so it might want to hesitate a little but just be patient and you'll get it lined back up right where it should be and into the lower so you've got the upper bearing or bushing the clamp and the lower okay and then I'm going to go ahead and put uh, the, the needle clamp and stuff back on here because when you set the height now that you've changed it you also have to line the needle bar up um, and the clamp up with the front of the machine. You, you don't want it twisted because then your needle is twisted and your hook may not be able to grab the thread. right? So. 
I'll just uh, take my little thumb screw and just gently turn it in and get it started enough just to stay in there. It's not protruding inside, you know, but it'll help me have something to hold on to. And then I'm going to take my jib and I've rotated the needle so that I can look right at the space and hopefully drop the jib in without dropping it on the desk or the floor here, the work table or the floor. They're hard to find when you drop them. Okay, so I've got that set back in and then I'm going to slide on the uh, needle clamp and in case you forgot the round part goes on first and the the square part with the thread guide is on the bottom so I just want to hold on to that needle bar so it's it doesn't slip around if I got and I got a better way to get some light in there uh, not really I guess just slip this up on there and I push down on the top of the needle bar get that in there mm -hmm. now I'm going to rotate my clamp until I find the hole for the screw right there. See there's the hole in the needle bar to put the mounting screw into. Right? There's the hole in the needle clamp. Put it on the other way your thumb screw won't go in. <laughs> and I've got that there then I will put in the mounting screw and mount the needle clamp oh look at that gee I had it all so pretty and see am I still lined up with the hole or no well the screws going in so I'm either way low or I'm in the screw hole <laughs> I think I'm I think I got it I can go ahead and tighten this up now so whew, I'm I, I'm always I'm always uh, happy when I get the jib back in there nothing will will stop work on your needle bar like losing a jib Okay, so, and of course I can slide it around and spin it and everything because I haven't clamped it back in, right? But that's what we're going to do uh, now. So I'm going to turn the hand wheel towards the front of the machine and I'm going to get, I can't say get the needle bar at the lowest point, so I'm going to say the clamp. And remember I use that link bar behind there sometimes to make sure that it's straight up and down too. See, you can you can get the clamp wheel bottom out, but the uh, connecting link bar back here isn't parallel with the needle bar. So it still has a way to go before it starts coming back up. So besides getting the needle bar or the clamp at the lowest there it spot, is right there. So when I'm looking from the end in, I want to see that that's straight up and down, just like my needle bar. Mm -hmm. Because uh, if people just hit it and say, "Okay, that I think that's the bottom," but that link is crooked, you might be surprised when they set the height.
and so if they go slow it works but if they start going at a faster speed or a zigzag it starts skipping every fifth stitch or tenth stitch and it can be just off by a little bit so now that I've scared you about that <laughs> I'm going to slide up the needle bar so that the top um, timing mark is right up there by the bottom of that right up there I can still see a little silver but it's up very close and then I'm going to tighten this screw gently just so it kind of hangs out there and I can check stuff so I see my link is up and down my needle bar is up and down so my clamp and needle bar should be at the bottom and now I've, I've got to get the clamp on straight right I don't want it turned this way I don't want it turned a little bit that way because it's going to make the the needle at the wrong place so I want to get down and look and see is the front of that uh, needle clamp parallel with the front of the machine here or another way is is am I looking straight dead on the screw because the screw is always in the middle of the needle bar you know is it just the straightest straightest I can be and it's worth um, it's worth it taking a little time you know because the the better the more accurate you set the height and the needle clamp the the better stitch you're going to get so I think that looks very good now I'm going to check my height here and I can still see I can still see my timing mark about to disappear I've got this straight mm hmm good now I'm going to finish tightening that so I kind of snugged up that screw just so it would mostly hold the needle bar in place but I could manipulate it a little bit and everything looks good my connecting link bar is straight up and down with the needle bar low spot clamp straight the top timing mark visible just below the metal uh, bushing there so now I will turn that screw and give it a good nice clamp for my needle bar mm -hmm. all right it sure looks good then there is another test too whenever you um, change the height of your needle bar or a presser bar and that is with your needle bar at the lowest position when you lift the presser bar there should be a space between and I don't care what machine you're working on there has to be a little space between and if the needle clamp hits the top of the presser foot anywhere then something is off either your uh, presser bar was set too high or the needle bar set too low or a little bit of each you know the needle bar is just a little bit low and the presser foot's a little bit high but you should never have contact between the needle bar and the presser foot when the presser bar is lifted and the needle bar is all the way down now what do you think isn't that a gorgeous needle bar yeah yep and it's not hard to do on most of these machines look at nice this vintage machine you know take off the clamp 
loosen this screw, pull the needle bar out, clean it, polish it, put it back in, put the clamp back on, lower the, cl the clamping screw all the way, put the bar up to the top timing mark, make sure it's uh, needle bar is straight in the machine and tighten the clamping screw. Thanks for tuning in and putting up with my obsession about needle bars. <laughs> I hope you'll come back for the next video of Benny the Singer Model 353. Thanks for watching my channel and take care.